Mini Motorways by Dinosaur Polo Club is a transit themed puzzle strategy game and a sequel to Mini Metro that was released in 2015. Mini Metro was a success across multiple platforms and its gameplay was about drawing out subway lines to connect stations together and create routes for the regularly shaped passengers to reach matching destinations. As you played, the map slowly expanded with new stations starting to appear and you were given additional tracks, trains and carriages to handle them, rapidly transforming your neat and tidy subway system into a sprawling logistical nightmare. This is the same base design that Dinosaur Polo Club have continued with in Mini Motorways, but by moving it out of the underground and onto the roads, have still created a game different enough to stand on its own. If you've played Mini Metro before, my one sentence analysis is that you will probably like Mini Motorways too, but stick around for more details and there is a comparison you'll want to hear later in the video. In Mini Motorways, houses and businesses slowly spawn on the map in various colours, and houses of a particular colour will want to reach businesses of the same colour. As time passes, little markers will start to stack up on top of buildings to indicate a need for customers, and if a car visits that business, then it removes one of these markers. A level will start very simply with one house and one business that you can connect with a simple road, but soon a lot more buildings will start to pop up and compete for space on your precious roads. For each week that passes in the game, you get given a choice of two bonuses which will add more road tiles for you to use, and specialised features to improve your city like roundabouts, traffic lights, bridges and motorways. The goal, just like in Metro, is to reach a high score, and every car that visits a business scores you one point, earning the tags of tourist, commuter and driver in each city as you hit 300, 1000 and 2000 points respectively. But you can't keep scoring points forever. If too many markers appear on a business, you'll get a countdown timer, and if you can't get enough traffic there to stop the timer filling up, that's the end of your attempt. Visually, it's moved slightly away from the minimalism of Mini Metro, though not completely, and it looks good with its own distinct style. There's a clear design that's easy to read, and the Mini City simulation is satisfying to watch as you progress through levels. The sound design is also nice, with chilled music over the noise of cars driving around, and satisfying little bleeps and bloops as you press buttons and place roads. It's good overall, although I did occasionally want a more noticeable audio cue to mark the appearance of a new building, or to indicate when a business was starting to go critical. Mini Motorways has a good gameplay curve where it begins in a peaceful, relaxing manner, but then starts to ramp up fairly quickly to add in all the strategic decision making. The layout of your basic roads can be efficient or rubbish. If you connect a single road to too many houses or businesses, then it can be quickly overwhelmed by traffic. Similarly, if a road has too many junctions that could be avoided by different pathing, then there are going to be a lot of delays and slowdowns caused by cars turning or waiting to pass. There's an openness to the design, however, that gives you a lot of freedom in how you want to draw your city and use the features available to you. Traffic lights are a little disappointing, with only a few edge case scenarios where they feel more efficient than just letting the cars have a free for all, but roundabouts are a useful solution if you do need to improve traffic flow through a busy intersection, although you'll want to use them effectively because you can only acquire roundabouts in the end of week rewards, and so you're only going to have a limited number of them. Bridges are used to make roads over rivers which, depending on the map you're playing, can be very important. And motorways are the biggest, most visible chains. They can be used as overpasses to provide fast, high-flowing access between two parts of the map. There's satisfying strategy in using these features smartly to connect homes and businesses while avoiding traffic jams and slowdowns. Using precious roundabouts, bridges and motorways to get cars quickly from one place to another, or to keep cars separated to prevent them overburdening your existing infrastructure. You can fiddle with your design and make changes as you play, with Mini Motorways also implementing an active pause to let you redesign while no cars are moving, a feature I'm a big fan of in a lot of games. But if you're happy with how things are going, then there's also a fast forward option to speed things along. As new businesses appear, you might notice that a slight change to a couple of roads or completely moving an entire motorway would make more sense, and you are free to make these changes. And it's then very satisfying to see when a change that you make has a positive impact on traffic and efficiency. But while the roads do lack a permanence in this way, they don't feel light or superficial, because even though you can make changes quickly, there is a delay on the impact as the cars out on the road will still have to complete their route before they can take advantage of your new layout. 
there's a lot of room to improve as you learn the game's little quirks and oddities, and you go through stages of just starting, kind of knowing what you're doing, and then actually being good at the game. And those markers of 300, 1000 and 2000 points actually feel like a pretty good indicator of what sort of level you're at. Although if you want to get really high scores, you might have to learn some of the darker arts, like building unusable roads to block spaces and avoid building spawning. Overall, the puzzle of mini motorways is an entertaining problem to solve that you have to keep on top of as the map expands. However, mini motorways does currently feel a little limited compared to Metro, particularly in that it doesn't have the endless or extreme modes. Endless is just how it sounds, no fail state, just keep playing. But Extreme was an interesting twist where you couldn't relocate trains or tracks after initially placing them, adding a permanence that greatly increased the difficulty of planning in a really engaging way. With the greatly increased number of objects in motorways, hundreds of cars versus handfuls of trains, I can see why an endless mode that continues scaling might be difficult to implement, and could easily become too resource intensive as you play for longer, but the lack of an extreme mode is disappointing. It is in the development pathway and so will likely be implemented eventually, but it's not in the game right now. So when I made a video on Dorf Romantic a few months ago, a solitaire Carcassonne-esque landscape builder, I said something about how it works as both a strategy puzzle game and a relaxing sandbox simultaneously because the point scoring goals of building forests, farms and winding rivers are exactly the sort of thing that you would want to do in a sandbox anyway. This was also true of Mini Metro, the fail state was if a station became too overcrowded for too long, and so to avoid that you needed to build an efficient transport network that could get any commuter to any shaped station without a long delay. And I think instinctively that's what people would want to do in a sort of transport sim. But in mini motorways, the purpose isn't quite to build an efficient road network, it's to make sure that businesses get enough customers. The Steam description says, redesign your roads and place your motorways to get everyone where they need to go. But that's not quite true. The fail state isn't if you don't allow people to get to where they need to go, it's if you don't send them to where you need them to be, and there is a difference there. It leads to odd situations where you completely isolate sections of the map, you only let these blue houses travel to one blue location, or you don't let a grey house drive to the nearest grey shop because there's a different one that you think needs customers. It's little things that you probably wouldn't normally think about doing in a transport game. Because the stations in Mini Metro produce different shaped commuters to deal with, the system had to be a little versatile. No matter where someone spawned, they had to be able to get to a matching station. But in motorways, it feels like you want a lot of disconnected specialised systems about getting only from A to B, because houses only ever want to travel to one location. So an ideal mini motorways map ends up looking less like a city, and more like a finished game of flow free. There's just a slight clash between what makes sense to build in the game, and what you probably want to build before you fully understand the puzzle, and as a result, the puzzle of mini motorways, though still great to solve, does feel more abstract and less thematic than its predecessor. I think this could be twisted by having multicolour houses that can send cars to multiple businesses, forcing a more versatile interconnected system, but I have no idea if that's even feasible within how the game is coded. But having said that, I have really enjoyed playing Mini Motorways. I've been looking forward to this game for a while now because I am a huge fan of Mini Metro, and I was just waiting for the sequel to finally be released on Steam. If you've not played either of Dinosaur Polo Club's games before but like what you've heard here, really you would probably enjoy either game. Both are similarly priced and so it's just up to you which one you prefer in terms of looks and theming. I would happily recommend both of the games. Mini Metro is probably a little cleaner in terms of its theming and puzzle, but Mini Motorways with its greater number of moving parts has an interesting complexity to it as well. So really whichever game you think just looks more interesting is probably the one that you should go for. But if you have played the previous game and want something similar without just playing it again, then Mini Motorways is a great way to get more of that Mini Metro style puzzling in a roundabout way.